Hello, everyone. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today what I want to talk about is how to get um, still image renders out of uh, Unreal Engine um, so that you can uh, use them for whatever purposes you might want. Um, so yeah, there's going to be three different ways. I'm going to show the absolute easiest way, a little bit trickier way that has more settings that you can kind of play with to get more, um, photographic results. And then the last way, which is going to, um, involve using uh, a level sequencer and just kind of an introduction to that and some, uh, some more fancy settings that give you some great anti-aliasing and better reflections and stuff like that. So any one of these is completely viable um, and useful, but uh, we'll start off with uh, the, the simplest way here. So uh, the simplest way is just to kind of get your scene set up kind of in your viewport the way you want it to be. And then you hit G for game mode. And so that takes away like any, any, um, any content that you don't want to have and say, I wanted to get a nice rendering of the front of this building here. All I would need to do is go up to the top up here, click on this window and then go to high resolution screenshot. And then we switch this to two to make the size of it a little bit better. And then you hit capture. And then down here, you can click here and it will pop open the folder that it's in. And you'll see a res high resolution screenshot, just one screenshot of the image. Now that's the simplest way to do it. Um, moving on to the second way, which you might want to use if you're rendering like objects in your scene. Um, so I'm going to go head in and up here to maybe, um, capture one of these objects here. So I'll go over here, hit F to kind of focus on it. See which object I want to use here. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I'll do this one. I'm just trying to find a cool background to kind of blur out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add a cinematic camera. So Cine Camera Actor, just kind of click and drag it into the scene. I'm going to pull it up here and I've got game mode on. So I got to hit G again so you can see it. And then it'll bring up this little window down here that'll kind of show the view of the camera. So I'm going to pull this over to kind of, whoops, line it up the way I want. Pull it back here a little bit. And then I'm going to hit the space bar to switch it to rotate and rotate it around. Okay. Space bar again, a couple of times. So I get back over to this space bar again. Okay. You know what? Um, let's see. That's not a good view of it. So just kind of move this through the scene the way you want it to be. I might even like rotate this. Um, I'm going to rotate this, but my pivot set up wrong. So hold on a second while I just switch over here to modeling and go to pivot and then edit pivot. And then I'm going to center it on the object and hit accept real quick, just so that I can modify the, um, rotate this object around. Cause I want it to kind of look nice there. Okay. Go back over here to selection mode. Cool. Click on the camera. Yeah. That's a better view. All right. So the nice thing about the cinematic camera is I have a lot more options here. So what I can do is I can change my focal point. You see with the camera selected, I get all of these settings over here. Um, I want to, um, I have it in manual here. I'm going to use the little eyedropper here and then I'm going to click on the object. So now that's in focus. You can see I get a little bit of a blur in the background. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and I'm looking for, where is it? Um, oh yeah. Focal length here. I'm going to increase the focal length. So, um, those of you who've taken photography or anything before, uh, know that, uh, when we're zooming in on an object, it does create a nice bit of compression. Um, so it really does give you that nice bokeh effect in the background. And I'm going to turn off this real quick so I can control the rotation perfectly. 
Okay, so I got a nice zoom in on it. Um, I can also increase or decrease the focal blur in the background. So um, I can, I have my F stops, focal settings manual, and focus distance, um, aperture. I can increase the aperture to 1.2. You know, like really you can play with how sharp you want the background to be or how soft you want it to be. You can see in the bottom corner as I'm playing with this. And I want it to be maybe right around 2.5. That's that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now that's great. Um, and then the simplest way to capture this is, again, we hit G for game mode. Oh, first, let's click out of it and G for game mode. So it hides everything. And then we go from our lit here. Oh, wait, sorry, perspective here to cinematic camera. So that's the camera view. And then we simply go over here and we go back to our high uh, resolution screenshot. Bump that up to two and we go to capture. And that's going to give you that uh, the more of those um, cinematic uh, camera qualities, you know, with the, with the bokeh in the background and stuff like that. Really quite a nice uh, image that we've got there. Now, if you that, so that's the second method. If you wanted to go even further with this um, and say you've got like some bad aliasing and really jagged edges and stuff like that, you can um, do the third the third technique. Now, the third technique is, you know, it's negligible how much it helps, but we'll see. So I'm going to leave the camera in the same position. We'll do a side by side comparison afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, uh, close this. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add a level sequence right there, the top one. And I'm going to title it render still save. Okay. And then I'm going to come up here and add. So this is the sequencer. This is how you would create like cutscenes and games and stuff like that. So those of you who are familiar with uh, programs like Adobe After Effects and stuff like that, you've got a lot of those same functions in the sequencers. Very, very sophisticated. A lot of depth to this that you can get into for making cinematic um, walkthroughs and stuff of your scene. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, to the scene. Go to actor here and i'm going to look for that camera render still oh wait no that's what did the i titled the camera send a camera actor i guess is the one we've got yeah okay so cool now i'm going to go ahead and grab this like this and make it side by side close this out here and then what we want to do is we want to make the sequence one. Right now, this is how many frames we've got. Now, there's just one still camera. It's not moving, so I'm going to leave it as it is there. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this back over here and drag this red one back over to it. And then I'm going to use the bottom here to really zoom in because I want to make sure that this is one single frame. Right now I've got it four frames, so I'm going to bring it down to one frame and then bring the red, now that's you know where, the, where it's going to end, down to one frame. So that's just one frame that we're going to render, okay? Once we've got that set, we're going to click up here where it says render this movie. Oh, one other thing actually. Let me go ahead and close this real quick. Um, one thing we have to make sure you have enabled to do this, we go to edit, plugins, and title movie <laughs> this should be movie render queue let me see where is it render okay movie render queue right here so make sure that's checked once it once you do check it you're going to have to restart your your game and your, your um your project so just check it, restart your project, and um, we're good to go there. So let me open that level sequencer back up again. Okay. So next, we're going to go ahead and go up to render here. And this these settings won't appear this way if you did not follow that last setting. So I'm going to go ahead and dock it there. Um, okay. Unsave queue. Save queue. And I'm just going to save it right here. Principal pipeline. All right, so then I'm going to go to right here, and I'm going to pull up this configuration. Uh, this is where you set the resolution and stuff. And so my resolution, I want it to be 4, 4K, so I'm going to go 3072 by 
2304, so that's a 43 ratio, or five, sorry, 53 ratio. Okay. And then all of this I'm just going to leave the same. And then I'm going to go over here, I'm going to turn off JPEG, and I'm going to add settings because I want this to be a PNG. So I'm going to add the PNG there. And then I'm going to add an anti aliasing. Um, and then I'm going to set this temporal sample count to eight. And then the rest of this should be good. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some console variables. Now, this is, you know, uh, above our pay grade as far as how we're going to do this. Uh, you know, like as far as what are the variables, we're going to type into the console variables here. And um, I've got a list of them. I'm just going to copy and paste. And these will be in the description. So first one I'm going to do is an ambient occlusion one, just copying and pasting. So just pay attention to the description for this. And um, that's what these will be. So there'll be four of them. I'm going to do a global illumination console variable. So we're just adding and copying and pasting from the description here. A little denoiser for the reflections. Okay. And improve the shadow quality. Accept. Okay, so those are all the settings. Uh, once that's ready to go, you just go ahead and click Render Local. And it says one frame there, and it renders the one frame. Okay, and then where that is located is actually, um, it, unless you specify, you can specify a different output location for it. Um, mine will be, and I'm going to copy this actually. Actually, no, let's go back over here to um, it be in your project. So this is your project folder. You go into the project folder and then under saved here, you have movie renders. Uh, screenshots is there too. So those high resolution screenshots will be stored in there. But under here, you've got movie renders. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this because I want to put it in the screenshots folder so we can compare the two of them side by side. So this is the first one. Came up pretty good. And then the second one here, just a little bit more photorealistic. Um, there's nice, you know, my zoom, I can zoom way in on it, better resolution. The actual um, anti-aliasing uh, makes for smoother edges on the object here. Um, if I zoom in here, you can see there's these little jagged kind of hair-like looking things that are happening because it's still operating in the real-time renderer. Um, those are gone. So... While it's it's a subtle thing, it's gonna, you know, as a perfectionist, it's gonna actually add quite a bit of of uh, quality to your to your image there. And also, what's great about this is once you have that camera set up the way you want, um, it's really simple to create more uh, renderings, right? So all you gotta do, you know, let's maximize this, minimize this guy, and you, um, is pilot the camera. So let me eject out of the cinema camera here hit G for game mode. Um, and you can also, uh, you know, go back to cinematic camera here. And when you're in this, you're piloting it. So I can fly it around um, to other spots and do more of these kinds of renderings. Right. And say I wanted to do like a nice wide angle, get the whole building in, change the f-stop kind of deal. I'll hit, um, we'll go back over here. Okay. Uh, here it is. disable and everything will be in focus and then i can uh also change the uh focal length so let's go to bring this down make it more wide angle like that and maybe pilot it over here a little bit you know kind of select your view you want to do maybe something like that and then i'll go back to my sequences which are right here and right here the render settings and then if i go render again it will now render that one and give me my anti-aliasing and the whole deal so i can go back over to the folder here 
and go to my movie renders. And here's the second one. And this really gives us, you know, a really nice, very crisp, beautiful rendering. So just piloting the camera around, great reflections. Yeah. So uh, that's basically it. Um, so creating the interior renderings, I would definitely turn off the, uh, the, the F stop on the camera so that we're not getting so much blur in the background, give you a nice crisp all the way across view. Um, good resolution, good reflections, anti-aliasing, all of that. So those are the three different ways. Any one of them can work in different circumstances, depending on um, how invested you are in getting the best possible rendering you can. That's about it for today. Thank you very much.